welcome to introduction to PDG for indie game developers. And this is specifically around the Houdini engine for Unity because we currently have the PDG asset link for Unity and they're working on it for Unreal. Um, though I, I need to say that it does actually work in Unreal. It's just you got to do a little bit extra work to, to get it working. Um, and I'm planning on doing a course around that uh, while the PDG asset link is getting built for Unreal, uh, just so everyone can get started with Unreal as well. So my name is Kenny Lammers. I'm, I call myself a procedural technical artist these days. Um, I'm a technical artist. I've been working at uh, uh, Studio Wildcard right now on Arc and Atlas. I've been working in the game industry now for about 20 years at Microsoft, Activision, Serial Software, and again, uh, currently at uh, Studio Wildcard. I've been mostly working in central technology groups, you know, on procedural techniques, 3D scanning, um, you know, just pipeline automation, shader stuff stuff like that, um, you know, all the fun stuff. <laughs> uh, I created GameTutor.com a few years ago uh, to start teaching Houdini because I really start, started seeing this like rise in the need for procedural uh, content creation for artists, right? Not just programmers themselves, but we needed to give the ability to artists and technical artists to be able to build uh, procedural content creation. So GameTutor was kind of the start of that. Um, I worked on uh, titles such as Call of Duty 3, uh, Crackdown 2, Alan Wake, Connectimals, Connect Star Wars. And again, I'm currently working on Arc and Atlas at Studio Wildcard. And uh, I'm also pr uh, creating a lot of uh, educational content underneath uh, the IndiePixel website. So I don't know, have you guys gone up to IndiePixel at all? Yes, thank you. Check out IndiePixel.com. Uh, this is where I post all my current tutorials. I don't really post on GameTutor anymore. And I'm, trying to, I'm gonna try at one point to move everything over. Uh, to IndiePixel, but we're not really here to talk about IndiePixel. We're here to talk about uh, uh, PDG and what it is. All right, so um, you know you probably heard a lot of talk, watched the launch videos and stuff like that. So what I really like to think of this is uh, giving or enabling the technical artists to be able to visually program an application. All right, so your current HDAs, when you're creating those, you're actually creating more of like a method or a class if you're familiar with like programming concepts, right? They, they do their one little thing. They take in some sort of input from the user and they give you some sort of output and then you're done. That's it, right? Well, PDG is a way of creating a whole application, right? That actually creates a whole level for you, right? So instead of having multiple HDAs in our scene, we just have the one and it does everything for us, okay? And we can manage that by giving artists uh, the ability to provide input, which are HDAs themselves, all right? So it uses the top contacts. This is how we access PDG, all right? So tops are their task operators, all right? And PDG is the procedural dependency graphs. Um, and what we're gonna see here in a sec, I have a video uh, showing you the final results of the level that you guys have seen uh, in the launch video. But also I have another uh, video that kind of describes how we lose the relationship and dependencies between the current way that we work with the Houdini engine. None of the HDAs actually know anything about each other, right? So. That's what we're trying to take care of. So this enhances that Houdini engine workflow for us. Right? It just really takes it to the next level. And it, it actually changes the way we start to work with it and how we think about how we utilize the Houdini engine in our game engines, okay? And it's so cool, I can't even begin to describe my joy. Um, it's so awesome because, uh, I'll go on a tangent here really quick because I, I do like to talk, but um, I created ProTrack. I don't know if any of you guys seen ProTrack at all, but it was a procedural track building system and I wrote a C-sharp layer on top of the Houdini engine so that way um, the designers didn't have to actually drag and drop HDAs into the scene, right? But it took me about a month to build that whole C-sharp layer. Uh, that's not, and it, you know, there was still lots of work to be done on it. And it was only to take care of the fact that the, the designers didn't want to drag and drop HDAs into the scene. It was there, it was there to manage all of the Houdini uh, engine assets. And it took me a month to write all that. PDG takes care of that, so I don't have to do that anymore. So. Another you know, use case for all that. So let's take a look at some of the final results from, so this one took me about three months to make um, and I, I was learning PDG. All right, so three months ago, SideFX asked me if I wanted to play around with PDG and I was like, sure, why not? Sounds like fun. And so um, I started learning it and uh, started building this whole level and everything you see here is procedurally done. Um, there's nothing, everything was done inside of Houdini. So you can see me working here. 
And so what we're doing is we're pulling in a lot of data. So a lot of the data is just curves, um, geometry, really basic geometry, right? And this enables me or artists, right, to go and define sections of the level that need very specific artist-driven type of content, all right? Like the roads or where the airports go, or where the trees go, stuff like that, or the, where the trees don't go kind of thing. All right. And so this one actually includes, uh, they've been using this example a lot. Um, this one actually includes the auto updating feature uh, with PDG, where it's actually looking for changes in the ge actual geometry. And a lot of you have had questions about how PDG is actually doing that. So in this particular case, I'm utilizing the partition by bounds node, all right? And the partition by bounds node basically has a bounding box around each tile of the terrain, okay? And what it does is it does an inter a geometry intersection test. So if any of those points in that bounding box have changed since the last cook, it automatically dirties that work item and says, oh, okay, well, I need to recook this thing. And because they have the auto cook feature inside of the PDG asset link, it just starts to automatically run, which we're gonna see here uh, in just a second, or a couple minutes, yeah. <laughs> So I thought it turned out you know, pretty good. Um, it's really cool that the roads actually um, build bridges based off of their uh, minimum maximum height from the ground, right? And the tunnels are built from a minimum maximum distance underneath the ground. Um, it was all that stuff from a CMI VFX video from a long time ago. <laughs> Enhanced a little bit more. It's a little bit more efficient nowadays. Uh, even the airports are all uh, procedural. The airplanes themselves were still modeled in Maya, but uh, all, all the, yeah, all the, <laughs> come on. <laughs> still, um, everything else is like the placement of the airplanes were all, was all procedural too. All right, so the general idea here is that it gives us the ability to split our processes into individual tasks. So smaller HDAs, all right? These are our classes. If you start thinking about it like this, a little bit more of a programmer-esque type of look, you know, or pers perspective on it. These are like our little classes, all right? Um, and the previous Houdini Engine workflow required, again, that we create tons of HDAs and wired the dependency manually. And if you actually have had experience with the Houdini Engine, and you go and try to take one HDA and feed it into another HDA, it exponentially gets slower and slower and slower because it's trying to marshal all that geometry into the final output. And so it just slows down to the point where it's just not even practical to use inside of your your pipelines anymore. PDG, again, takes care of that for us. All right, so again, now we have one master HDA in our Unity scene and a bunch of small HDA artist tools. All right, and so by artist tool, I mean, uh, for so for example, you know, where the airports are, were placed, all that the artist did or all that I did is I created a simple HDA that had a curve Right, that was just a closed curve, and I fed that into my PDG network, and it cleared out the trees, placed an airport, and you know we were good. And it flattened the terrain, made sure it blended it in with the erosion, so it was a nice transition. Right, it wasn't just a harsh you know cut. Same thing with the roads; it was just a simple curve that had a really basic representation of the road, and then PDG would output the final road for us, kind of thing. So that that's what I mean by artist tools. Your HDAs are really tiny, which makes them run really really fast. All right, so let's take a look at an example that I did, was it last year, I think? This is the Guard Tower series. This whole series is actually up on the SideFX website if you want to go and learn how to you know, build um, HDAs for the Houdini engine. And this is a great example because when you look at it, that, that asset right there is one HDA. It allows us to build a wall and put some dirt on top of it. And then I have another HDA that is a sandbag HDA. But the wall and the sandbag HDA don't know anything about each other, right? So if I were to move the wall out, the sandbags would still intersect, right? So with PDG, same thing with the ladder. I would literally have to go and touch every single one of those HDAs and update that inside of my Houdini engine if I were to use the current workflow that we're all familiar with. Same thing with the guard tower. It knows nothing about um, the height of that, that dirt pile, right? And in this case, this is actually a, a dependent HDA system because I built the, the bottom part first and I feed in the top part of the guard tower into that HDA. So when I move you know, the bottom part of the, the tower 
the house moves up and down with it. So it starts to move really, really slow, you know, when you, when you start moving with it. So what we have now is a more enhanced Houdini engine workflow. Technical artists can, can assemble a procedural op application. There's no code unless you really want to. Um, they have, you know, Python top nodes and they have, uh, you can still use VEX obviously inside of your HDAs, which also, also speed things up for you. Uh, we can create massive interchangeable functionality using HDA processors. So this is one of the key points to PDG and why it's so powerful is because once you start building, you know, a network like this, you have all these HDA processors, each one of these processors has functionality in it. Well, let's say like at some point down the production of our game, right, we want to change something about that, or we have a different version of that HDA. What I can do is I can just swap out my HDA processor with a, a different one, a different HDA. And now just rerun my top network, everything updates for me, right? So it's a very, very non-destructive, massive procedural application or system, if that makes sense. So it's completely swappable. You can just swap out your HDA processors for whichever new one that you're using kind of thing. All right. And it's also well integrated to, into the Houdini engine for Unity using the PDG asset link and Unreal is in the works. All right. So let's take a look at a newer example. I'm going to show you this here really quickly. So this is the example I'm going to show you guys here inside of Unity in just a sec. But this shows you why um, this is better, <laughs> if you will. All right, so your general layout is you have a dummy geometry node. You just put in a null node there. And then you have your actual object level top network. All right. And what I'm doing here is I'm wedging to get all the roads. Right. Previously, you saw Robert was doing, he was pulling in all of the uh, image maps for his road layouts. This one's going to be a little bit more artist driven where you can move the roads around. All right. And then we have all of our SOP HDAs. And this is where all the major, major functionality is um, contained. And I'm just using the HDA processor to load up those HDA definitions to process the geometry. All right, so I have all the, the roads, and these are those individual tiny HDA artist-driven tools. So they're all HDAs themselves, and I'm just feeding that into my top network. So literally, you don't even need to have a programmer on your team, which you know you should you're if you're making a game, right? But from a technical art standpoint, if you're building levels, you don't have to necessarily be a hardcore programmer to create a really advanced procedural system, right? You can do this all visually. And I find that actually quite fascinating. It's, I find Houdini fascinating, so it's really fun. All right, so what I'm going to do here is actually um, show you guys the auto update. Everyone seems to be very, very interested in all that. It is, you know, really, really cool because we want to be able to change stuff on the fly. And so what's happening here is it's recooking. Now, what I didn't do in this particular network, um, just because it's a basic example, is I didn't set it up so that it's pulling in each primitive or each building one by one. It's generating all the buildings and then pulling it in as one big mesh. I do um, actually want to update it so it, it generates a full-fledged city for us. Another one of the courses that I want to do. I'm just adding to my long list of courses that I want to do. <laughs> there you go. All right, so let's actually go and take a look at all this stuff inside of Houdini while Unity is loading over here. So let's, add, let's walk through a basic uh, pipeline. You know, and this is like a full pipeline. This is how, you know, you would actually integrate it into um, your current setup. And uh, then let's look at some of the artist driven tools that, that, we, that I built. And then I'll, I'll, I'll break down the actual like um, SOP HDAs that I built to generate this particular um, network. So let's just exit out of here really quick. And let's go over here and set my project. Now, setting your project paths is very important with TOPS, all right, because it's sending it to a folder. All these files that are, get, that are getting written out, you need to make sure that all your, your pathing uh, is set up. Now, if, if you guys have watched, or you should watch the, the four hour course that I put up on the SideFX website that talks about um, TOPS, the first whole first section is getting set up with 
um, PDG. And it's because what you want to do, PDG in itself is writing out a lot of data. You want to make sure all that stuff is going to a folder that you know about. <laughs> you don't want to lose your data, right? And so understanding you know, how the pathing works inside of PDG is very important. And understanding all those attributes, like the PDG output and PDG name and PDG index is very important um, when you're working with this stuff. So uh, the, w the one way that you go about setting up your um, pathing, at least a good place to start, is with the local scheduler. And that the local scheduler uh, is kind of the conductor of the whole system. And I think that's why they put that icon in there. Right? It's a little conductor dude. Right? The, he's a task master. He's the task manager. He's the one who's looking to see who's done, which node is done, or which work item is done. And it's passing that data down to each one of these guys down here. So if I were to do something like hit shift V on this node, right, I get a bunch of uh, wedge items here. And these wedge items are basically the roads. So you can see I'm getting a path right here to OBJ IP basic road. And that node is right over here, basic road right here. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm setting up a wedging attribute up here called road asset. And what it's doing is it's looking for a particular node at the OBJ level, all right? So um, that, that whole thing is a little complex, so I'm, I'm gonna try to keep this speedy. But um, it's basically looking out into the scene and it, it works the same way inside of the Houdini engine, this, the same um, expression that you see right here. So it's a CHS road asset and then PDG at index, right? Remember the index is the index of the work item, so it's zero, one, two. Right, and our actual, um, and our actual, what am I looking for? Sorry, there we go. So our actual channel that we're looking for is the road asset itself, right? So it's one of these guys. It's a road asset, but you notice that each one of those parameters has a little one, right? And then there's another one that has two, right? So that's why I'm appending that index onto it. That's what's actually feeding me back the path that you see here into my top network, right? So I'm assembling a string. That's all that's, that is really doing, okay? That's how I'm getting all the roads dynamically. That, way, that, that means what you can do is you can actually add as many roads as you want into your city system. That's how that works. And I go over how to do all that in the actual um, course. So let me launch Unity over here. Just make sure I open this stuff for you guys because it's fun to see it actually happening. I'm so tired of these presentations where they show you videos, like, look how cool it is, you know? I just want to see it actually working. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> well, I work around computers a lot, so we have a good you know, relationship going on. <laughs> All right, so let's go, uh, while that's loading, let's go back into Houdini over here. Well, let's just talk about this a little bit more. All right, so let's go back into our top network. So again, we have our dummy geometry and we have our object level top network. All right, and by object level, I mean that, you know, when you're at the OBJ level, right, you can go and type in top network, right? And then you can put that into a sub network, right? And then right click on it and you can say create digital asset. That's an object level digital asset or HDA, okay? Uh, there's another way to do this, and this is how we do it for Unreal, all right? So uh, the other way to do this is to put into a geometry node right here. And we'll do something like drop in a box, right? And then we'll do a top SOP. So we'll put in a top network. You notice that looks a little different, right? So if we take a look up here, we look at the, whoops, top network like so. Looks a little different. There's no input or output, right? Okay. Uh, and that's because it's a, just an object level network, right? So when we're in the geometry uh, level, we can feed in geometry into a top network and then process it using top nodes. So if I were inside of this top SOP, you can see we have this geometry input and you can see we also have a box. Something we just wrote out that box basically to a file really quickly. And we can go and then start processing this with all the other top nodes. So you can see like a geometry output node and this is when it starts to get just like crazy because now I can dive into this node and I can start working with just your general SOP nodes, doing it just like we did do with any other HDA. So I could come in here and do something like a poly extrude, right? You can see that we have this incoming file and that's that box, right? And we have the output node 
All right, so if I were to do something like inset this a little bit and cook this, it's gonna go and produce nothing for me. And that's because it probably doesn't like the, the name. For me, there's my box. And there's that stuff. All right, so anyways, that's how you do the, the workflow for Unreal, right? Is you would go and you just create a top stop level node in there and you feed geometry in, all right? Yeah, okay, cool. So I got five more minutes. So it's a good time to actually segue out of all that. So basically then I'm just importing the roads right here. All right, so we have all the roads all set up. So let me actually hide all this stuff. And then I, I partition them together. So I'm just gonna use my hotkeys. So shift V will dirty and cook for you. And then we will merge it all together. And I'm doing that so I merge it all into one file basically. And then I'm gonna build all the areas like so. You can see it's still cooking. There we go. So we built all the areas. Now I have my general you know, footprint for my level, right? Then I'm gonna go and build all the plots. So this is where I go and basically subdivide it up just doing really, um, it's not true KD tree stuff, but I'm actually just splitting it up into individual squares. There you go, we create some buildings like so. And then we do the final uh, process. And in this case, um, all I'm doing here is I am actually texturing it and adding the roofs and just adding a little bit more details just for demo purposes. There we go. So everything is randomized and we have lots of you know, cool little basic template buildings. Look at that. How well did that work out, right? All right, so uh, in my last couple minutes here, let's actually just go and um, I'm going to go and rebuild all my roads just really quick just to make sure this is nice and fresh. So I'm going to select all my HDAs and do a rebuild selected Houdini assets. All right. All right, and there's the PDG asset link. This is basically our interface into our complete top network. So I have the ability to go to any top node and actually build the geometry for that particular node, right? So I can go and get the geometry from any one of those particular top nodes. You don't have to just cook the whole thing if, if you don't, if you want to do that sort of thing. So you have a lot of flexibility um, there. All right, you notice that I actually have the auto cook check box turned on right here. All right, and what I want to do is I want to go and select one of my roads and we're gonna edit this and probably screw it up. Okay. All right, so you notice that I just made a change and that PDG is picking up that change, right? And so now it's cooking and what it's gonna do is it's gonna output for me a city, another version of that city. Oh, and I need to auto load it, sorry guys. So let's actually. Assets that were changed, right? Yes, it only cooks the assets that are changed in this case. Um, this case, it's a really small one. I didn't actually uh, partition by any sort of bounds, right? So in this case, you're going to see all the buildings just kind of pop in. Um, tomorrow, when I go over landscapes and scattering, there you go. So now we have a road all adjusted. All right, so I can go and do that over here as well. So let's actually select the road. Uh, there we go. And do that. And it'll give me another city with that road adjustment, basically. Uh, but again, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to go over terrains and uh, talk a little bit more of the advanced stuff and partitioning by bounds, because that's where we really start to uh, do the geometry intersection tests. And that's how we start to uh, tell PDG what to update based off of what's changed, that and attributes, right? So huge uh, boost. Again, um, if you remember, this whole city was constructed from, I think, four HDAs. And now I only have one single HDA in my scene, right? I didn't have to drag and drop in a street creator. Then I didn't have to drag and drop in a plot creator. Then I didn't have to drag and drop in a building creator, right? I'm doing it all in one. So that's really the power um, with PDG, that and you know the audio updating and uh, the ability to write all this stuff out. I mean, there's, the list goes on. And this is a course you have available on the website? 
Yep, it's up there now. It's about four hours long. There's uh, five sections to it. It walks through how I made the whole um, uh, demo level with the roads and yeah. Oh, it's super fun, yeah. So thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs>